There is very few places that I know of where you can be the first person to catch a steelhead there. Southeast Alaska, there's hundreds of those. It's the place that's gonna be left. It's the last stronghold that there is. I started coming to Alaska when I was a little kid. My dad would take and give us one family vacation a year. We'd take our old 1978 Dooley Chevy with a 350 in it. We'd hook our 20-foot crest liner onto the back of that with a 70-horse Evinrude and go fishing for a week. Fast forward throughout my life, we did that you know, every couple of years until my dad ended up coming to a place in Southeast Alaska. We could fly in with Alaska Airlines, we could build a shop, keep our boat here full time, have a house, and have a place to stay and still do the same thing. What I did after that was all based off of poking around creeks. I've always been a steelhead junkie. I've still had fished since I was a little tiny kid. About the third day ever, I tried to find a steelhead here. I got up on this cliff about 20 feet above the river. I looked down and I saw what was the most amazing sight I've ever seen. They were stacked three, three deep on top of each other, whole length of the run. I'd never been able to see a steelhead on its own before I caught it. I knew nothing about steelhead until I saw them. When I saw them, I learned more by watching one fish in a run than I could ever learn by catching a thousand fish. The value for me is watching someone feel the same way I felt the first time I did. You get to do what everyone wants to do in their life, and I do it every day. So it's like living out a hundred people's dreams all at once. Describe Rick with one word. Rick's a trip. <laughs> it's, um, no, meeting Rick has been incredible. You come to a place like this and get to see some of the most beautiful landscape you've ever seen. See these fish in small, small estuaries. Like, you can't help but be totally inspired to want to keep that around. I want my child to experience that. And if we don't make some changes and hard decisions, like, there's a real, real possibility that that won't exist. I think we need to describe what a steelhead is. It's an animal that is an anomaly to begin with. It doesn't know if it's going to be a trout and live in that river its whole life or go to the ocean and eat squid. It's something that we probably will never understand. It's fun to see what can be without humans. I'm almost a casual observer to the whole system. I've worked with Trout Unlimited Chapters of Alaska, which maps out different watersheds that have had no previous record of salmonids going up in them. And basically, a limit the number of roads that can be built in these viable watersheds. Another thing we just started doing this year with the Wild Salmon Center, we're doing a steelhead genome mapping project. They've done it for a couple of years now and have a ton of data from everywhere but Southeast Alaska. We're taking a scale sample and helping fill in that genome to basically have a record of the diversity of steelhead from every watershed, every place. <laughs> if I ever feel like I am the person that is causing them not to come back, I'll quit, I'll stop. I don't need to be here anymore. You know, if they're gone, I'm gone. Coming up here to Alaska, one thing that's always really, really special and stands out is how everybody works together. 
Everything I do is based off of a harvest for sustainability. The bait I use in my pots are from commercial fishermen. They bring in the halibut heads, and I get to use it for my bait for my clients to catch their crab and shrimp. We work together. It's all part of the same circle. There's not a commercial fisherman in the world that says, I want less fish. We all want the same thing. The new generation of people coming up see that, they know that, and they're willing to work with each other for a common goal. You can see a genuine alliance and appreciation for this place that they call home. And hopefully that can spread to more people so that we don't lose this. I would arguably be more happy walking up a creek without a fishing rod because everything I do is just for the hope that I find one. I want to know that they did something that was amazing. I want to see the aftermath of how resilient that fish was and what it did to go there. I don't want to give them up. So I went to the place that I have the most confidence is gonna be their last stand. And I'm sitting here at the gates. <laughs>